So if Pootie Tang, Get Out, Undercover Brother, Groundhog's Day decided to come together and have a baby, it would definitely be this film. guys welcome back to my channel it's Tyra here with another struggle review here to discuss they clone Tyrone now this movie stars John Boyega Tiana Paris and Jamie Foxx now before we get into all things are they putting something in our food or not <laughs> I need you guys to drop down and subscribe to my channel and like this video I'm gonna give you guys a moment to do that then we're gonna come back and discuss I think for the longest time when we speak about what we want to see more black people in, more stories this, everybody always speaks on one thing in particular. I would love to see more black people in the sci-fi genre. This movie said, here you go. Go back, 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 back. Now that you guys have hopefully subscribed to see more of me, let's get into this movie. Now this movie was directed by Joel Taylor, a young black up and coming director. What more could you ask for? Now he has done some writing for Space Jam A New Legacy, Creed 2, and also done some directing with shows like Boomerang and Twenties. But this is definitely his solo breakout project showing us what he is capable of all along directing and writing this film. Mystery, black exploitation, science fiction, and satire. Via Jules and the cinematographer Ken Singh, the atmosphere in this movie was so on point to me. Such great set design and world building. The Glen feels like a real life place. The lighting, these pops of neon color when necessary. Then we get this mostly dark, gritty, 70s style backdrop that feels like a black exploitation movie which is only enhanced by the sound design here. You get these 70s, but you know, really funky, <laughs> shaft, coffee, superfly, dolomite backdrop type of score. And then you get this mixy old school kind of modern type of soundtrack with Erica Badu remixing Call Tyrone, but they clone Tyrone. <laughs> then you see lots of Uncle CJ here, or even Drunk as Fuck by PJ. And then we go old school with artists like Bootsy Collins, Diana Ross, Saturday Night Love, Night and Day LB Shore of it all. Different artists from different decades, which plays into this movie so well because via the tech, the cultural references, the clothes, a lot of the times in this movie, I wasn't really all that sure which decade we were supposed to be in. Now, just as I thought the direction was good, the acting here and the cast was even better. I would love to see Tiana, Jamie, and John in anything together. A part two, they clone Tyrone again one more time because they just played off of each other so well. Jamie Foxx here as Slick Charles giving all of the up pimp name Slick back beats that you would ever want from him. I swear the jokes were just writing themselves. A 70s style pimp in attire, lingo, hairstyle with the sideburns to match. You know, even with the 70s coke habit to match. Very much so a time capsule type of pimp even though we're not in the 70s. Tiana here as the Nancy Drew, the Carmen San Diego of the group. You know, I may be a hoe, but I'm an informed hoe. I'm a hoe with goals. Like, <laughs> very good here. All the references to something like a Foxy Brown, coffee, get Christy love. She's literally the only real one in the group. She's the smartest one in the group. She just happens to be a prostitute. And lastly, our main focus of the film, John Boyega here as Fontaine, not Tyrone, because I just knew he was going to be Tyrone. Now, I did give a little pushback for this role once I found out that it was supposed to be Brian Tyree Henry 
Being fresh off of Atlanta and playing that character of Paperboy, this would have been so up his alley. That whole vibe of surreal, strange, satirical, comedic yet dark, he does it so well. But I can't say that it is just completely a missed opportunity that we did not have him here. John Boyega did a wonderful job here, just like he's done with all the other roles that I feel like I've seen him in. This modern, typical, dope boy drug dealer, all about collecting, trapping, and territory, who only clings to a distant memory of a younger brother who was murdered by a cop. He plays really well at being this trap dude, a few words, really, really self-absorbed, doesn't really give a damn about anything outside of his own agenda. But later we realize, you know what? It's about a little bit more than him just cloning Tyrone. Then of course we have a really great supporting cast. Biddy, I don't know who the hell Biddy is in that pink wig, but Biddy was doing what needed to be done as a little snitch, messy informant around the neighborhood who also just happens to be a prostitute. Her name is Tambrilla Perry, but she was definitely giving me Biggie Shorty. J. Alphonse Nicholson is here as an op and a rival to Fontaine. Very much giving Lil Murder once again from P-Valley. I hope they don't typecast my man in every single role, but he delivers what needs to be delivered here. And we also have small little, little nuggets of stuff like David Allen Greer here as the freaking preacher. I don't know about you, but the first thing that came to my mind was, I got a feeling everything's gonna be all right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I it was giving Martin. <laughs> it took me all the way back to that Martin episode. And even though they didn't interact with each other, it's always a good time to see David Allen Greer and Jamie Foxx in anything together. We have Kiefer Sutherland here as our the man character, even though he isn't the man, he's the white man. I felt like he was really underutilized in this movie. With us opting for the man, well, at least the one in Glenn to be a fellow brother, we missed out on the opportunity to get a little bit of more of what he can bring. Thinking about, you know, Stand By Me, The Lost Boy, shit. 24, like, Kiefer can really break it. And I felt like we didn't utilize him as much as we possibly could if he was the actual factual villain. But even with missed opportunities like that one, several continuity issues when you just feel like as an audience, well, damn, is there no security here? <laughs> <laughs> what happened to, you know, the 24 hour surveillance and them constantly knowing what's going on? How are our main three so able to easily access everything at its convenience for the plot? See that pretty much throughout the entirety of them solving the Scooby-Doo mystery. Even the very ending, there is a whole lot of we need this, this, and this to happen, a one, two, three, four method for us to get to where we need to be. Like the whole thing about, you know, him getting shot, playing dead, you hold one of the little agents at gunpoint, get him to lead you to yo-yo get them to access like it was just a whole bunch of bam 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 that I felt like was a little clunky and could have been handled better you know excuse me sir if you could point me down to the elevator that leads down to the secret laboratory I will be forever out of your atmosphere funny but it's like do they not see all of you cultivating riding out you know in your candy paint cars headed there to stage cool like what you know <laughs> And the same exact thing can be said pretty much about the beginning of the film with them wanting to maintain the appearance of this particular pimp, this particular preacher or drug dealer. If we witness this pimp watching this set drug dealer get shot up, wouldn't we change out both of the clones to avoid, you know, either one of them being self-aware to even want to investigate? Like, you know, I was just being real meticulous. <laughs> With that, and the same could go for the townspeople who weren't clones, like where you never expecting anybody like our J. Alphonse Nicholas character to go. Didn't I just shoot you yesterday? Didn't you die yesterday? Why are you back here in my face? But I also thought maybe the movie was chalking that up to, you know, the mind control, the music, the food and the whole thing. Maybe those are just things that they felt like they didn't need to worry about. Outside of all of that, this is a really good movie, especially with the writing. With me reading the synopsis for this movie, as soon as it started and we have our young Joomba character refer to Fontaine as a Squidward a la Spongebob and Bikini Bottom, 
I went all the way off. I was like, oh, this is smart. Bikini Bottom is referencing not only Fontaine being the Squidward in Bikini Bottom, who was always mean, moody, and self-absorbed, or an actual factual island bikini atoll, which in the 1940s and 50s were used as a nuclear testing site for weapons. Now we moved the people who originally lived there off the island with promises of, you know, once we're done doing what we need to do, you can go home and you can return. Where we placed them was not anywhere that anybody wanted to live. And by the time they were able to go back there with all of this nuclear weaponry going around everywhere, the water was soiled and so was the land. So we were chosen because we just happened to be some one off island that nobody cared about. And then several nuclear tests are ran on our homes at which we can't even live there anymore afterwards. I thought that was pretty cool. Then we get all of these Michael Jackson references. We open the movie with a Michael Jackson reference. By the time our threesome, you know, finds their very first white black person with the afro he's listening so you know don't stop till you get enough getting his best life when we find out later in the movie that all of these black white afro people that we have seen throughout the film they just happen to be former black people were actually failed experiments. We find out later in the movie that it just wasn't enough to put things in the food and in the music to get into mind control, perfecting the cloning down to a science, achieving this peace and this utopia, all while keeping this area undesirable to continue to do experiments here. If everything runs perfectly and we achieve this utopia, this can eventually be a global thing with this not only happening in the Glen, but a little bit of everywhere. Eventually, we are gonna span out and create what world we wanna see. Now, of course, this was all in the same vein of getting closer to whiteness. You know, a simulation isn't just enough. You know, cloning and perfecting a black person is just enough. We need to transform eventually over generations into white people. Now, at first I was like, what? 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 Now, I took a step back with us meeting the actual OG Fontaine who has been assisting in this whole operation. Like you as a black man insisting in the cloning of yourself as well as other people, why would you ever want to conform or transform over generations into a white person? Especially with after what we learned, you know, him making sure that memory carries over of what happened to his brother being shot and everything by a white cop. Ensuring that every single one of the clones of himself have that same memory. Then I was like, okay, <laughs> it's not really about transforming into a utopian white society that being white is the best way to be because it's superior to just being a black person because that's what I got at first but after watching this a second time it was like oh all of this torture that our OG Fontaine was carrying around for what happened to his brother all of this deep rooted resentment to where they were even able to recruit him to do this was rooted in all of this pain to where he felt like this is the right thing to do. Being white or just, you know, having a likeness of whiteness isn't going to achieve, you know, a utopia because all white people act in a manner that black people don't. It was like, no, this is the only way that we would ever be accepted. I don't care, you know, what they try to put into the food, into the music. We'll always and forever be perceived a certain way as long as we don't look like them. The best thing to do is to transform into them to show them, you know that we're not a threat if I'm just like you why would you ever display the amount of violence towards yourself that you seem to display towards all the other black people especially young black men in the Glen now OG Fontaine I'm saving us I'm thinking about our future why would we ever keep fighting we will never be accepted we will always be treated as inferior unless we transform into them. Current day Fontaine, yeah, but for you to do that, you are stripping away who we really are. You got to die. Like, <laughs> I was really here for that and thought that that was such smart writing. Or even the fact once Fontaine realizes that he is a clone, he never had a choice. I'm not a real person. Why would I try to fight against anything? I'm just gonna stay here and be the same dope boy that I'm expected to be. But then later realizing real actual life people like 
like the ones in this neighborhood or like this boy June Bug. Oh, I love the fact that we have June Bug be the inspiration or really just that gateway to go. You remind me of somebody like you place this memory here for a reason and I'm using the same memory even though it's not my own and I'm a clone. I've always had this love for my younger brother who just happened to be gunned down by a policeman. I want to save June Bug just for that reason. And the same can go for Slick Charles, baby. Like I may be, you know, some pimp, also some clone that you program to be a certain way with all of these memories of, you know, pimps, hoes, players, balls and whatnot. But I am a trickster. I'm gonna use all of the things, all of the negative things that you embedded in me to save my own people. And even Yo-Yo, who they felt like was so obsolete, they didn't even necessarily have to make a clone of. You're gonna put chemicals in your food so you forget about the task at hand. Eating that chicken, drinking that malt liquor, drinking that grape drink. Things we feel like black people will cling to for comfort and salvation. Predictive programming with the music, the television, all while conducting experiments on you people as if you are nothing but lab rats child if they would have mentioned the tuskegee experiment i would have flew off the handle oh but yo yo we don't need to clone you you are a dime of dozen there's always going to be holes because holes are going to hold but however the pastor the drug dealer the pimp people in this community look to them who don't have any guidance for saving father figures salvation things that they would never see in you we don't need to clone you like the fact that she proved them wrong and showed her way and goal how smart she was and even found some inspiration in herself to know that she could do more than just whole like it was a whole lot of things going on in my mind the fact that this story was surrounding a pimp a hoe and a drug dealer but I was like but well, we take we can get let me not go too deep into representation because I was like they couldn't be nothing else but you know for the premise and for the Glenn it works just like the the tech you know the flip phones the computer the the big back tvs you never really know what era that we are in but i thought that worked really well with the premise just like us having the doughboy the prostitute and the pimp these things are ever changing they pretty much remain the same no matter what era or generation you are in doing the exact same things and having the exact same agenda so that's why we could have all of this high techery that we are able to clone people and have this really high tech facility while at the same time when we are listening to phone conversations and phone taps and stuff it looks like we are recording in a 1970s damn FBI thing. Like why does the surveillance cameras look like some 1960s liquor store but it matches so well. Majority of the plot in the premise of this movie is about being complacent and not investigating not you know expecting anything just going with the flow which is why we can have all of these missing posters everywhere and nobody low-key give a damn all of these people are of course underground being experimented on loved all of the movie references here hollow man clockwork orange like it was a whole lot of little nuggets and easter eggs here that were just really awesome but we never expect anybody to challenge any narratives or do anything different everybody in the glen is expected to do what they always do in the Glen. These black people do the exact same thing every day, whether they are clones or not. I love the fact that we have Yo-Yo mention her grandmother say, oh my grandma, never see her. <laughs> we never actually see the grandmother. Did you even check in on your grandmother? Do you care to know? Because it's been a whole lot of just caring about ourselves, especially when we get into a character like Fontaine. Once again, getting into those movie references, there's a whole lot of Groundhog Day I went to look at his inspirations for this movie and I did see, you know, it follows Groundhog Day and I think like they live. I was like, where was Pootie Tang? <laughs> where was things like Pootie Tang? Because that whole situation with the chicken and the clones, it was really low-key giving Pootie Tang and under undercover brother, you know, generals fried chicken. I was like, well, where was that? <laughs> but getting back into Fontaine, we never expect him to do anything outside of his repetition, the Groundhog Day effect. So when he goes to that door with the mother you know I got a sandwich and she has you know that automated response we never ever expected him to want to open that door to see what was on the other side which of course was nothing but it's like you guys are so complacent and so unconcerned with anybody outside of yourselves and your own agenda you don't even care to open the door and look at your own mother and just make sure she is okay even though she is giving you the verbal response that she is just so good and so funny I love the fact to keep up 
uh, appearances with the facade later on in the film. We have the hookers doing hooker stuff. <laughs> like, yeah, he said 3,000. Like, oh my God. That was just so freaking hilarious to me. So many things that could have went absolutely wrong if the satire was not placed right, but it was. So when we have all the chaos going on downstairs and whatnot, and you have homie on the phone, like, girl, you come through. Like, we got, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, these are, you know, some stereotypical things that some Black people would do. Even when we get to the ending and all of the clones are free. And of course, when we go to the news, you know, we're not going to find anybody, you know, who has a little sense. We're going to go to the prostitute, you know, somebody have to be on camera. Like, hey, what's up? Like, ah, uh -uh. <laughs> Real straight. Even when we get into the ending and really us uh, actually finding out. Of course, we already knew that this wasn't just happening in the Glen. There were a whole bunch of statements of we're everywhere. But it's just like, oh, this is Tyrone. <laughs> this Tyrone is in LA. Are we going to get a second one? Are we going to get a second movie of, you know, not becoming a Michael Jackson? We're not, we're not going to conform. We're not bleaching our skin. I swear that's what I thought it was. It was very much like, it was more than some Bentilago Michael Jackson tried to conform into a white person to achieve, you know, his highest level of acceptance and success. And then in the same token, if Michael Jackson was still, you know, brown, big nose, enjoy yourself, enjoy yourself. If he was still that Michael Jackson, would he have been, you know, as big as he was? So many questions to be had with this movie. I really enjoyed my time with this movie. Was it perfect? No, but I really enjoyed what we got. I would very much so be interested in seeing, you know, them come together. There is maybe hopes in the end with conversations of them going to Memphis and kind of being a Scooby Dooby Doo team, <laughs> running around, you know, saving people and the whole clones and the whole nine. I would definitely be here for many of those films. I'm also really excited and happy to hear that Jamie Foxx is okay because, child, we was all outside like so is this promotion for the movie is he really sick? did they clone jamie like it was so many questions <laughs> so many you know questions going on but i'm happy to hear that he is healthy and in you know better spirit this movie was great and i'm definitely looking forward to anything that jules taylor has to offer well you guys that was my review for they clone tyrone i hope you enjoyed it please drop down and tell me if you did this is definitely one of those more provocative statement type of movies where depending on who watched it when they watched it how many times they watched it and what was received you can get a different answer from a little bit of everybody so i would definitely look forward to hearing what you guys have to say or add to my commentary i see you guys next time for my next review bye